section 6.4 we're going to be solving equations using rational expressions that's pretty much an equation with a fraction in it so the first thing we always have to do is we want to check our domain we want to make sure that there's no variables in our denominators if there's not any variables in our denominator then we don't have any restrictions and our domain is going to be all real numbers okay so the first thing we want to do is we check our domain the next thing we want to do is we'd like to be able to get rid of the fraction, so we have to multiply by a least common denominator. So our uh, common denominator, we'll just say our common denominator, it's going to be 12. So common denominator is what can all of them divide into evenly. So whatever you find your common denominator, you're going to multiply every term in the problem by 12 okay now I want to simplify each term I'm going to work with this one first and I'm going to divide a 3 out of this if I divide 3 out of this I need to divide 3 out of this so what I'm left with is a 4 and then an x so I'm going to bring it down here 4x equals now I'm going to move to the next term and I'm going to simplify a divide a 6 out of each of these divide by 6 divide by 6 and what I'm left with is just 2 times 1 which is 2 now I'm gonna do my next term so I'm gonna divide a 4 out of this one divide a 4 out of this and I'm left with 3 and an x so 3x now I'm gonna solve for x so I wanna subtract 3x and I'm going to say x equals 2. My solution is just going to be 2. Most of the time it's usually in brackets or braces like that. Alright, so number 2. First thing we want to do is um, check our domain, which means if there's a variable in the domain, we have to set our domain, the denominator, not equal to 0. Okay, so this is x is not equal to 0. This would be a repeat. So all I need to know is that my solution can come out to be any number except for 0. x cannot equal 0. Okay, the next thing I would do would be find a common denominator. If you notice, they already have common denominators. So it's kind of like um, we can ignore it since they already do. We don't have to do that work. So now we're able to... Uh, work the rest of this problem. I want to move, get a zero over here on the right, so I'm going to subtract five. So I have x squared minus four equals zero. And we've done this last chapter. Remember when we had a zero on this side, we would try to factor the left hand side, in which we can do this. This is um, different of perfect squares. You remember our formula we have for difference of perfect squares was we name our a is x we name our b which is 2 and then we say x a plus b a minus b and then we have equal to 0 our zero product property allows us to take this set it equal to 0 and solve and allows us to take x minus 2, set it equal to 0, and when I solve these, x equals negative 2, and x equals positive 2, so my solutions are a negative 2 and a positive 2. I have to make sure that my solutions are not one of these restrictions, and it's not this Okay, number three is a long one. It's a big one. We're going to break it down. The first thing we want to do is because we see um, variables in the bottom, we want to work with our domain restrictions. Um, so we're going to be looking at our domain. If anything can be factored, we want to factor it first. So I can see that this can be factored, and you can use the bottoms up method. So if you go off to the side, and I have 3x squared minus x minus 2, and I do... Um, I'm looking for what multiplies to give us negative 6, but subtracts to give us a negative 1. That's going to be 2, and a negative 3, and then we put it over our original. Our first, 
right here, a 3x and a 3x simplify. This one doesn't. So this becomes 3x plus 2. This simplifies to x minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to write that underneath this one. 3x plus 2 and x minus 1. So, and then the next, this term does not factor any further, and this term does not factor any further. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do is try to factor that out so I can work with my domain. Alright, my domain, I have to set everything in the denominator, 3x plus 2, not equal to 0. And then I also have x minus 1, cannot equal 0. I've already used this one right here, and I've already represented this one right here. So each of these have been represented. Now I just need to solve, so subtract 2. divide by 3 x cannot equal negative 2 thirds and x cannot equal 1 okay so those are my that's my domain next I'm gonna find a common denominator a common denominator it's gonna be 3x plus 2 and x minus 1. So I'm going to write my common denominator above each of these terms. 3x plus 2, x minus 1. Write it above each term in the problem. Okay, now we're going to start canceling. Alright, I'm going to cancel this with this this with this in the first term so we're only left with my top portion which is going to be 4x squared minus 24x next I'm going to move to my next term and I'm going to cancel this with this and so I'm going to have left 3 times x minus 1 so and then equals and on my last term this cancels with this and I'm gonna have negative 4 times this parenthesis so I'll represent that with negative 4 times 3x plus 2 simplify I'm just gonna carry this part down distribute here distribute over here minus 8. Now I want to move everything over to the left, so I'm going to add 12x, line them up, okay, and then I'm also going to add 8. That means over here on my right I'm going to have equal 0. On my left I want to simplify everything, 4x squared. Now I have a negative 24x, 12x and a 3x. Those are all like terms, so I'm going to add those together. And that's going to be negative 12 plus 3. What's that? Minus 9x. And then I'm going to have plus 5 equals 0. Alright, now we want to do bottoms up to this. Let's go out to the side. 4x squared minus 9x plus 5. What multiplies to give us 20, but it's going to add to give us a negative 9. That would be a negative 4 and a negative 5. Then we take and we put it back over our original. Simplify. So this is going to x minus 1. And that becomes 4x minus 5. Set these equal to 0, and then we want to solve each one. Okay, and this one becomes 1, x equals 1, and this one becomes, when you, when you finish working that one out and you solve it, x becomes 5 fourths. So where our two answers are these, but remember we said our domain up here could not equal negative 1, so that means this does not count. This is our only solution that gets to be counted. So don't forget to go back and check your domain at the end.